All right, guys, we are in Wilmington today. I'm driving down up near 23rd Street. I'm heading over to the American Standard Train Parts House, which is Yando Witherspoon for this area, to get a replacement defrost board for that one that we found that was bad on Sunday. The unit actually blew another fuse uh, overnight last night. Whether or not it has to do with defrost or not, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to see if we can replace that board and figure out what's going on. Maybe it's just the board, maybe it's the contactor on the heater, who knows, but we're going to see if we can figure it out and uh, make it so there's no more fuse blowing there. Alright guys, here's our old defrost controller. We're going to take all the wires off of it and put on a new controller there. Uh, I'm also going to check the contactor on to make sure it's uh, working properly. I don't think I actually checked it the other day, it's hard to believe. Um, I'm going to check it and make sure the ohm rating on it is proper. And uh, then we're going to restart the system, see if we can't figure out what's going on. Our new defrost controller is in. Our plug fastened tight. Temperature probes. It's our fan. And our old board, the fan relay, was kind of popping off. I don't know if it actually had popped off. Uh, as you see, when that happened, or if it was damaged on the inside or what. But. Uh -oh. Okay guys, I'm going to test, there was some wire that could be touching down in this area, so I'm going to kind of jiggle those around, <laughs> scientific testing, and take some voltage measurements, amperage measurements, once we start it back up again, the heat get checked out just fine, nothing appears to be wrong, but we're going to run through it with a fine tooth comb, there's a new variable speed motor I put in about six months ago, you can hear our contactor chattering, I really like to change out contactors that are doing that sort of thing for fear that they'll make improper contact and build up a little bit of heat and maybe get damaged or prevent it from you know me having to come out in a couple of weeks to do it. It may last a long time like that, but um, I generally prefer to go ahead and change them out. Alright guys, we got our unit up and running. Defrost board is in there. We're gonna test defrost in a minute. Our head pressure around 200. Our suction pressure there around, I don't know, 55, 60. So looking pretty good. Uh, it's probably in the low 50s out here right now, so not too cold. Uh, a little bit of sweat on the lines there. Not too bad. Uh, a lot bad. A lot better than the one next to it over here. frosty. <laughs> All right guys, now we're going to take the new defrost board and short it out to force defrost to see the difference between what we had before and what we have now. All right, first our unit shuts down. The reversing valve changes over. We have about 20 to 30 seconds of dead space here. And what will happen is the compressor will come back on in cooling, uh, theoretically melt whatever ice is built up, which is none right now, which is forced defrost. It'll melt the ice, the fan will come back on, and everything will shut down. Then after 20 or 30 more seconds, it'll go back into heating mode. Please. Before we had our fan in motion, and now our fan is doing nothing as it is supposed to of our defrost cycle run. So our head pressure comes down as our fan turns back on. Then we will shut back down. Fan comes back on, I'm assuming, to bring the head pressure down so it stabilizes more quickly. Everything shuts back off. We're going to put it back into heating mode, and in a few seconds we'll come back on. Ah, uh, the waiting's the worst part, isn't it? Time delay. It says five minutes, but it feels like a thousand years. Come on now. There we go. 
So we're back in heat now. Everything's working like it should. Happy day. There's our unit that's in defrost. What I'm going to do is show you the other unit that's freezing up. And this good information. About five or 10 pounds of suction pressure. These people are going to hate my guts. Our frozen up unit here, we still have our low suction pressure. We also have a low head pressure. I went ahead and put my gauges on for that. That tells us that, in fact, we do have low refrigerant. Um, our valve is starting to freeze up. Freeze up the coil. Cause it to be very inefficient. Not much heat coming out of this except for the heat strips. So in a minute, we're gonna turn those off because it's relatively warm here for the next few days. We need the 70s. Uh, that is a good thing. That means I can come back on Friday. The bad thing is that our other unit, over here, I can't seem to find it, why it is shorting out, blowing fuses, or just blowing fuses for whatever reason. I have been through the system up and down. I cannot find it. I finally, as a last ditch effort for tonight, put up a different thermostat, just in case we're having an issue with the old thermostat. Uh, and that's just maybe a little bit of wishful thinking uh, at this point. I'm gonna put it up, see how it does. Uh, I'm really at a little bit of a loss to figure out where it could be. All the relays are fine. The frost board's fine. I see no problem with the variable speed motor board. Uh, it's kind of a random event. So I can't really tell what's going on, but hopefully the thermostat will prove to be the weak link. We will see here in a few hours probably. All right, guys, this is day two. We are taking a look at the little unit here. Our low voltage short, which was a pain in the buttocks. Has not blown a fuse again. Actually, even had to go as far as to change the thermostat on the wall uh, from power stealing to a battery powered stat to see if there was some sort of fault inside the old stat. I have a Honeywell 3000 on right now. So far, it's working. Uh, that does not mean we're home free, that's for sure. We're still looking at the small unit here for lack of refrigerant. We're going to go inside, take a look at the evaporator coil, and then try to trace down the leak from there. Baby, let's roll! Alright guys, we're warming up the H10 for our air handler here. I'm going to take a look at this coil here to make sure there's no leaks on it, because it's definitely leaking somewhere, and there's our number one location. We have our train air handler doors off. This is our evaporator coil. You have to take a little metal shield off the front of it here to take a look on the inside of it. We'll be checking. I noticed the U-bends in this area. I've had a problem with in the horizontal application on train coils. I've seen a lot of those leak in that area. So we'll take a little thorough swing through here and uh, see if we can't locate a leak in this location. So basically as we're looking at the coil, we're going up into this region here in our probe here, and that's where we're getting the breathing. I see it takes off pretty good. So that's where our leak is. We'll keep looking on the coil, see if there's any more, and give a brief look outside. Because it is 10 years old, and we have more than one, you never know. All right, guys, we picked up our leak up front here. Uh, let's see what happens when I stick the probe to the back of the air handle. Not good. The sucker is finished. Alright guys, we're back outside on the unit with the low refrigerant. Uh, service valve leaks a little bit. Uh, we can probably stop it with leak lock or nylog or something. Uh, it leaks through the cap by itself, even when it's tightened up. Um, if she does change the coil, I'll probably change the valve as well. It just makes sense. Why are you going to leave a valve in that leaks, even if you can stop it, since you're already opening the system up and doing so much work. And uh, there's practically no refrigerant in the machine anyway. So pumping it down really doesn't present much of a you know, benefit. There's a few bubbles in there. One comes up every now and then. Also have our little quick check acid test. Uh, I use those from time to time. Just kind of poke it on this suction line. Let some of the uh, refrigerant oil go across it. See if it turns red.
That ain't too damn good. They're really going to hate me. Alright guys, we're back out here on the train heat pump. We had acid present in the system. We have a leaking evaporator coil. I have the lead set up on the mega ion meter to ground on the chassis to the top of the contactor. The sucker doesn't get much worse. So just about everything major that can go wrong is gone wrong except for the outdoor coil leaking. But bad bad news all the way around. I'm gonna take off the crankcase heater just to take it out. It might be the thing that's grounded. Uh, but either way, it's not great news. These two wires here on the flag terminals at the bottom of the contactor go to the crankcase heater, which I guess this one's in service all the time. Sometimes they're broken across the contactor so they're in service when it's not running. But this one was in service constantly. So we're going to check it without this crankcase heater wires hooked up. That's not good news. That's not good news at all. She is on death's door. I wake up at 5 p.m. each day Waiting for the shakes to go away I smoke the evening cigarette Which precedes the opening of my eyes I let my arm hang off the bed I rest a while my weary head I check the clock so I can rise At the opening scene of the night 